This is a self-driving RC car that I just finished building, and in today's video, we're gonna test it. Possibly to its own death. I can just point to a location on a map and tell it to go there and it will be on its way completely autonomously. Now, I really wanna understand the limitations of this thing, but I don't wanna waste a bunch of time reading about the software. So we need to cover a wide range of tests. Things like, can I start a food delivery service? Does it handle high speeds well? What about obstacles? And how about extreme terrain? We will find out the answer to all of those things in today's video. But first, let's take a look at what this thing even is. The basic platform for this car is the Traxxas Slash. You may have seen it in some of my other videos, but I've added an autopilot system and a bunch of other random electronics to make it work autonomously. I designed a housing to keep it all clean while driving outside, 3D printed it, and threw it all together so we could get to testing. So that was really easy, right? Wrong. I somehow forgot that I live in Texas and it's flaming hot outside. And these electronics are getting way hotter than expected. So instead of frying my autopilot, I went and took a trip to Amazon, 3D printed a new fan mount, drilled some speed holes, and made sure we had positive pressure ventilation. Now that I have everything set back up, I should be able to just point to a location on the map and tell it to go there. But even better than that, I can plot out a ton of different points and the car will go wherever I tell it. I'm getting a little bored because this is pretty slow, which means you are really bored. So let's turn the speed up. And not only that, we're gonna race it with the drone to see if a horrible drone pilot like me can beat a GPS guided RC car. And right out of the gate, the self-driving truck looked like it was gonna do awesome, but you can see in the background, the drone is starting to gain on it and then it quickly just swallows it up. And I'll be honest, from here on out, the race was just utter garbage. So I hung around for a while, let the truck catch up, and I really tried to get a cool flyover shot, but even that wasn't great. That got lame really quick. So we're gonna try and recover by jumping right into the field of autonomous food delivery. Our first course is a delicious shrimp cocktail, some sushi, and non-alcoholic rosé. We'll be running on a perfectly smooth concrete surface so we get extra traction. And I quickly learned on this hot day that one thing I hate doing is picking up warm shrimp and fish off the ground. So we're gonna repackage and start out with a moderate running speed. One of the most exciting things of this run was how much that trailer swung around. So that gave me the idea that I need to go back to the drawing board and step the speed up because I wanna see what happens when that trailer really gets swinging at like 15 miles an hour. So now let's just enjoy. <laughs> Just to recap the trailer jackknife because it was swinging around too much and plowed into this moron in the middle of my filming session holding the camera. But overall, I mean for a prototype, I'd say this worked out pretty well, right? And just to have a little bit more fun, I put it in manual mode and drove all over the parking lot pretty much as fast as I could go to get these beautiful shots. Our next course is a lovely beef stew with dehydrated strawberry chips, and we'll be running on landscape stones. Now, I was pretty impressed with the car's ability to handle these landscape stones because there's no suspension on this trailer, so it jerks all over the place, and they're incredibly slick, but the autopilot was able to maintain some degree of position heading. Now, throughout the testing of this, I did destroy the trailer. I'm not sure if you just caught that, but the wheel popped off. Luckily, I was able to repair it for some more testing, but that shows just how harsh these landscape st stones are. Uh, regardless, I got bored, so that means we need to step up our intensity and throw some stuff around, which kind of worked, kind of didn't. Either way, the meal turned out pretty good, I must say. Sure, there's a little bit of grass and maybe a tiny bug, but that shouldn't stop me from enjoying a delicious meal. 
Our third and final course will be a dessert consisting of mermaid snack pack pudding and a lovely confetti cake. Our running surface is going to be the yard. Now we'll start out on nice smooth grass, let my son chase it around for a little while, and then we're going to ramp up the speed just to see what this thing can handle. In case you missed that, I programmed it to run smack into a pole. I didn't mean to. Either way, that same crazy camera guy was in this chasing the cart, and like a weirdo, he tried to kick it out of the path so it would turn, not thinking about the fact that it's going to a GPS coordinate, so it's just going to turn straight back into that pole. Either way, everything looked fine, nothing was broken, so we decided it was time to ratchet it up and really go for broke. The car itself actually fared exceptionally well. Now the trailer, not so much. And I guess there was a little bit of food left, but hey, it's still a prototype. It's still a work in progress. Despite how perfect that all looked, there are some drawbacks. And the big one is that it doesn't have any vision. So it just plows into anything that's in front of it if you couldn't already guess that by the fact that it slammed into a pole at full speed. I also noticed while I was testing this thing over different obstacles to see how it would handle ramps and jumps that if it does find a way to flip itself over, the wheels are going to keep spinning and it's going to keep trying to drive to its next mission point. But that's also kind of cool because if it does find a way back on its wheels, it's actually going to try and finish the mission as long as it can get itself turned in that direction in time. And while the initial setup is actually incredibly easy, a lot of the problems I had could be fixed with tuning or setup. You can see an example where the tires are oscillating here, and that's because I don't have all of my steering and throttle tuning accurately defined. And throttle application is actually another challenge here. On a faster, longer course, you can see that through the turns, the thing lifts up and the back end kicks around a lot because it doesn't apply the throttle as smooth as a normal driver would. I was also kind of at the mercy of the last update of the GPS map. On the planning view, you can see that there's tons of cars in this parking lot, but if you go to the drone view, you see that there isn't even a single car. So you really need to set eyes on the current state of where you'll be driving to know what obstacles will actually exist. So after all that, do I really think this guy is capable of replacing something like DoorDash? Well, we'd have to find a better way to package the food to start out with, so it's not strewn all about our delivery route. And we'd also have to figure out a way to give it some eyes, something like LiDAR or ultrasonic sensors, so it doesn't plow into poles and people and things like that. This type of system is really more geared towards open fields or large areas where there's not many safety hazards or obstacles that it can't handle. This also can't handle stairs, obviously. There are other flight modes as well. I can flip this switch on the receiver to turn it into a manual mode so I can take over the controls if things get a little out of hand. Um, there's also a return to home mode where I just tell it to return and it drives all the way back to me, which is pretty cool because I can be even lazier than I normally am through the power of autonomy. Let's change gears and talk about the design specifics of this car. I had a telemetry radio, a Pixhawk 4 GPS, a power management board all hooked up to a Pixhawk 4 mini autopilot and a Turnigy 9X radio transmitter and receiver. It was all stuffed in this 3D printed box. Now the GPS mounted almost perfectly to the Traxxas slash LCG chassis, but I did have to modify it a little bit to get it to fit all clean like it does here. 
this is obviously before I added the fan and destroyed the beautiful aesthetic of everything. So let's jump into the fan design now. I used a 40 millimeter cooling fan because it had a higher CFM and I ran some analyses in Fusion 360's electronics cooling module to gauge how a 30 millimeter fan would perform versus a 40 millimeter and was much happier with the 40 millimeter results. To power the fan, I was running right off of the autopilot's battery through a 5 volt UBAC. This is the exact same one that I hacked off of the system like a genius because the wiring took up too much room and I didn't realize I would need a fan yet. Adding filter foam over the fan's intake was probably the smartest thing I did because this thing gets really dirty and I didn't want to blow dirt all over my expensive electronics. I was very adamant throughout the entire process that all of the electronics still fit under the original body shell first, it just looks way cooler that way flying through parks and parking lots. But another reason is because it protects the electronics a lot better. A lot of the example rovers I'd seen had all the electronics hanging out there and they were more of just a proof of concept. Despite the total number of impacts that this thing took, there was actually never any damage to any of the electronics, this thing just kept on going. I'm using a telemetry setup to send directions to the autopilot by connecting one end to my cell phone and it wirelessly sends messages to the other one that's connected directly to my autopilot and that makes it really easy because I don't have to open this thing up to give it a mission. These missions are planned in a software called Q Ground Control that can run on either a computer or a cell phone but it allows you to basically just create a plan on a map that defines wherever you want the rover to go. You can change the speed and you can change the launch point and all sorts of things to customize the plan that you want the rover to take. The Pixhawk 4 Mini autonomous controller that I used can work on multiple firmwares. Uh, most of this video was shot with PX4, which is an autopilot software that's really designed more towards drone, but you can also use ArduPilot. And ArduPilot's probably got more history and more functionality with rovers, so I will be going back to this in the long run. I did a little bit of testing in this video with it, but the speed was easier to get correct with PX4, so that's what I went with with the higher speed testing. But that does bring me to my next point. What are my plans for this thing? Well, for one, I do hope to add LiDAR. I don't know if I'll go 360 or if I'll do just forward facing at different angles, but I want to allow it to see things so that I can either build a speed machine or more of a sophisticated rover that can handle a lot more outdoor areas. I'd also like to figure out the follow mode so that this thing can follow me around and film me because I do a lot of solo filming. It would also be really cool to swap the motor from one of my speed run cars into this thing and try and push it to like 50 or 60 miles an hour. I just don't know if that will be controllable or if it can think that fast. And another upgrade I may make is a more precise GPS. This is probably a couple meter accuracy. I'd like to get down to like a centimeter accuracy GPS so I can stay on a much more predefined route. This is the real time tracking of where the rover is relative to my plan. The orange lines are what I planned for it to travel along and the red line is where it's actually going. Now you can see that it kind of squiggles and oscillates. Some of this is gonna be throttle and turn tuning. Some of it's a function of not being able to make that tight of a turn, but I also wanna make sure that GPS is never a problem for me and that I can always accomplish within a foot or so of my target location. This project though was an absolute blast and if you have any other suggestions for what you'd like to see an autonomous rover do, please leave me a comment and let me know because I would love to take this thing further than what I've already done. Other than that, that's pretty much all I had for today. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.